Greetings, apreneurs. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast, the show that uncovers the secrets to win with books beyond book sales and dominate entrepreneurship. Through exclusive author interview stories and must-have resources, you will discover some of the secrets and strategies to thrive with books and generate lasting income. I invite you to become an entrepreneur ambassador and join me in my mission to raise up 10,000 Caribbean entrepreneurs by 2030. Spread the word about the podcast and encourage more people to increase their impact and income with books beyond book sales. Without further ado, let's get into the show. Greetings, apreneurs. Welcome to episode 120 of the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about idea to book in 30 days as we prepare for the annual Rocket Writing Challenge to write a book, a small nonfiction book between 10,000 and 30,000 words. And that competition or that challenge will be taking place in the Indie Entrepreneurs Facebook group. And I'll be sharing the testimony of our first idea to manuscript challenge winner that's what it was called back then and then i renamed it the rocket writing challenge and that's mr leo stone morrison and since taking that challenge in 2018 he's gone on to publish at least 11 books that's amazing (laughs) and he has his own publishing business he has turned his books into courses He has developed a whole ministry around books and he's empowering and helping other authors to write and publish. And he is truly an entrepreneur rock star. And so you're going to hear his story briefly. And then I'm going to share the seven steps to go from idea to book in 30 days, and that's going to be from chapter two of the book, Entrepreneur Secrets, of which this podcast has been named. So stay tuned. All right. So Before I get into the interview with um, Leah Stone Morrison, let me give you a brief update on my own entrepreneur journey. The big thing is that in the Indie Entrepreneurs Group, which was established in October 2018, that's I think it was October 18, sometime there's our anniversaries coming up and uh, How many years would that be? 2018 until now. That would be our five-year anniversary (laughs) is coming up. And uh, in the Indie Entrepreneurs Facebook group, we normally have two big events each year. One is the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit in January. And then we have the Rocket Writing Competition in November. So we start the year on a high note, teaching you about publishing and how you can leverage your book to create profitable products and services so that you can create more impact and income faster. And then in November, you end the year strong by writing a book, which you will publish. And so that is what I'm going to be focused on for now. So what's going to happen is that you can get the book, The Rocket Writer, from entrepreneursecrets.com or extramalga.com. And then you will be able to get on my mailing list. And then beginning October 23 through to October 27, there will be daily emails going out, teaching you about writing a book. So these will be prep emails to get you ready for that. That is my latest entrepreneurship venture. And I want to encourage you, if you've been thinking about writing a book and perhaps procrastinating like Leo Stone, that you will be inspired by his testimony and to start. So he went from one book on that competition and now 
in five years, he has at least 11 books. I counted when I went on, on Amazon in preparation for this um, podcast. So we're going to get into the interview just now. And then after the interview, I'm going to be sharing from chapter two of the book, Authorpreneur Secrets. When I encourage you to get the book, I should say that for the Rocket Writing Challenge, I'm going to be revising Authorpreneur Secrets. So that is going to be what I'll be doing on the challenge instead of writing a new book. And of course, November 2 is NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, where authors across the world will be trying to write a novel of 50,000 words. Our rocket writing competition is to write a small, valuable nonfiction book of 10,000 to 30,000 words, which you know you can use to light that spark <laughs> in your business, in your personal life, ministry, and uh, it will change your life completely. So without further ado, let's get into the interview with Leo Stone Morrison. Welcome to the broadcast, author Leo Stone Morrison. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I know our listeners are excited. Our tribe is excited. So tell us a little bit about your author journey from idea to book and what this book, Mind Renewal, is all about. Thank you for having me. Um, the, the journey years ago, years ago, many years ago, even before I came to know the Lord, I heard one day in my spirit that I was to write a book. I got the name of the book and uh, I procrastinated it. I didn't venture into the book. It, and I'm so glad today that I did not write that book. It would have been a disaster to okay. many lives. And, um, and then now, as a believer and as a Christian, I was thinking about writing, but did not have the confidence in writing. So when I heard about the indie group and uh, the 30 day challenge, and then it was by Ruth Taylor, who I, who I knew from JTS, she taught me, what was the class? Was it, um, it is evangelism. I'm not sure. <laughs> evangelism. Well. And so, you know, I, I was comfortable with Ruth. I knew Ruth and, um, I remember Ruth asking me once, it was, a, it was a question in the class, what is my hobby? And when I said, uh, my hobby is praying, and she said, no, I mean like um, football, dancing, singing, I said, praying. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the 30 day challenge. And um, so I asked Ruth, I said, what is the, the, the amount of words for a, a reasonable book, for a good size book? And she said, 40,000. So I divided the 40,000 by 30. I got 1,300 and plus. So that was what I knew that I needed to write per day, 1,300 plus words per day. And uh, I spoke to my wife, my family. I said, this is, I'm going to take on this. And so in other words, give me my space, give me my time. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. <laughs> Because I, I do have a full-time job, and so this would be doing when I was, this writing would be done when I'm home. Yes. And so I took on the challenge, and I, it, it, for me, based on what I know of me at that time, if it wasn't for the challenge, I would not have completed the book. Wow. I needed that. I needed the challenge to, to inspire me. Okay, I need to. So there are days when I got to like 700 words. And I recognize, okay, with 700 words, I am short 600 plus. So the following day now, I was under more pressure to, to make up. Yeah. And um, I have, as, as Ruth said, four daughters. It's really four sons. Four and, sons. And a daughter. <laughs> okay. Four sons and a daughter. So a big household. And so to get the privacy to write sometimes, I had to leave home sometimes. There are times when I had to go to the library just to write. Mm. I could get out of the house. Because once I have a three-year-old and a two-year-old. Wow. Those are babies. So they are calling on you, calling on you. Uh, and so 
that was the challenge. And I wrote and I wrote and I got my best writing time in early in the morning. Okay. When everyone is asleep. So I go, went to bed early. I got up like two o'clock, one o'clock when everyone else is asleep and I, I had quietness. Mm. I found out also that once I prayed first and then I started to write, then it's like the Holy Spirit was just downloading, just downloading, just downloading. And all I had to do was just to write what the Holy Spirit was saying, just write what the Holy Spirit was saying. So I made a commitment. I said, December 31st is my deadline. I am going mm -hmm. to submit it. So, you know, normally we, we would go to... Um, they call it again, New Year's night, watch night service. Yes. I said, I'm not going. I'm staying wow. home. I'm finishing this. <laughs> yes. And I think I submit, I sent that email to Ruth minutes to 12. I think it was. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Happy for you. The, 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 joy I, yes. the joy I felt was it was more than when I graduated from JTS, which was a major accomplishment. Wow. For me. And so because before JTS, okay, I went to Meadowbrook High School. Oh, me too. I, I had me my too. time. <laughs> <laughs> Big school. Yes. I, I did my time. I, I did my time. And when I did my CFCs, I passed only one subject. Mm. And the reason why I passed that one subject was the, the teacher told me that I am not going to come out to anything. Wow. And so I went and I studied her subject, got my passes, and I went in search for her and said, Miss Cetier, I passed your subject. Wow. Wow. <laughs> went on to went on to Excel, Excel so coming to college. I did myself again. Mm -hmm. Did CXCs again, passed one more. Went back another year. And then I passed the rest of the subjects. So my education journey was not easy. After that, I applied for UTEC, did a, applied for a three-year computer programming course. I completed two and then just stopped. No reasons, just decided I'm not going any further with this. Mm -hmm. Applied to Vector to do a computer um, technician, did about two classes, then stopped. So my education journey was not easy. It was challenging. It was challenging. And so after coming to know God, and then he said to me, go to JTS. My life changed. It was My education journey changed after I came to know the Lord. Yeah. And so for me to have acquired a degree in theology, guidance and counsel, was a major accomplishment for me. But yet still, to submit that manuscript to do it. <laughs> minutes to 12 2018 wow it was like wow it was a yeah and um a church found out that i was visiting i've never i don't even know the pastor for the church i was contacted and asked to come and do a, a session there and to to take my books and uh, i went i took books and right there i had a book signing <laughs> yes <laughs> which leads me to the next question how have you how many books have you sold print books ebooks about how many i'm about 500 now wow congrats about 500 books and that is what um july august september october about 500 books not bad not bad and um, outside of the book sales, how have you been generating income, um, leveraging your author status? If you care to share, you don't need to give us specific details, but in terms of range of income, how much income, having subtracted your book cost, about how much income have you generated for books and uh, other book-related um things since july so that's july august september october in the last three months give us a range in u.s and dollars what i what, what what i can tell you ruth is and authors is that after the second baby was born the last baby my wife um we decided for her to not return to work wow. but to stay and take care of the baby 
So our finances came under significant pressure in such that we were down to no savings at all. Wow. It was so bad that my, 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 my daughter took sick and we were not able to take her to the doctor. We had no money. So we were flat. We were going from paycheck, from my one paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. It was so bad. I went back to God and I said, okay, God, can I get a second job? And he said, no. Today, I can tell you that we have savings. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. We, we have savings. We have That's savings. enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I trust that you were inspired by that interview. And if you are still on the fence about writing, that interview should get you off the fence, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. So you can still get the current edition of the book, Authorpreneur Secrets by C. Ruth Taylor. And I'll put a link to it in the show notes. And in chapter two, I share about seven secrets to write a manuscript in 30 days. And the manuscript is essentially the earliest draft of the book. So that's what we're going to be doing on the challenge. It's not the finished book. You're going to move the ideas from your head and put them onto paper, and then they're going to be refined. And, and then you go through the proper publishing process. So it's the earliest draft of the book. It's the unedited published version of the book submitted to agents and editors for publication consideration. And what are the seven steps that I used that I've been teaching to help authors to successfully do this all right so here are my seven secrets one you need to choose a topic and a why for writing so that's combined the topic and the why so usually i'm sparked by a reason to write and that leads to a topic when i say the topic i don't mean the title of the book you know it's what are you going to write about and uh, usually it's a subject that is important it could be your memoir or it could be your expertise and you have to come up with a why because on the challenge, you're going to face days where you don't want to write and you're going to have obstacles and you need to have a why. And that book by Simon Sinek, Start With Why, you can buy that and read it and it will help you. So having a powerful why for me is like the oxygen that keeps the goal <laughs> breathing. So I want to encourage you to write down your reasons. Choose a topic and write down your reasons. Maybe three for working on it. The second thing is to create a book outline. Now I know not everybody's an outliner. Some people are pantsers or discovery writers, but I find that if you have some kind of outline that just jot down the ideas, the central ideas, the, what is it that you want to include, you know, just jot down something so that you're not just writing in the dark. Although some people do that because that I found that the outline was the secret sauce. For me, even just a rough sketch, and that's what helped Leo Stone, that's what helped Raquel and the others who've taken the challenge successfully. Three, choose your writing strategy and methodology. Once you've created the outline, all right, are you going to write by hand? Are you going to dictate some of it? Are you going to use your phone? Are you going to blog it? You heard Leo Stone said he divided at the time, 40,000 words into days. How many words did he need to write each day? And so you need to work out some kind of strategy and how you're going to do it. Are you going to do it on your phone, your laptop? Are, are you going to have set times in the mornings and things like that, which leads me to number four, which is set writing time blocks. So I usually set a deadline to finish. And of course, on this challenge, it's going to be November 1 to 30. So the deadline is already set, but you have to set writing blocks. Is that going to be in the morning? Is that going to be in the evening? Is that going to be during lunchtime? You have to create a specific time to, to write or sometimes, you can have writing sprints. So we're going to do writing sprints in the group. You can use a timer and set 30 minutes and just write. Sometimes if you're waiting in line in the bank, just write. If you're waiting on somebody, just use those time. But try to get as much time in as possible. You have to set writing blocks and make appointment with yourself. If it's even just 10 minutes at a time, 
you know, you can do it. If it's 15 minute blocks, do it. And once you do it consistently, you will make progress. Number five, eliminate distractions. So during the time that you're writing, you want to turn off all notifications on your phone. You don't want to be on social media unless you're doing the writing sprint, but turn off all the distractions, mute things, right? A friend of mine would go to a hotel to write. She would take a week off and just go to a hotel to write or find some quiet space where you will be undistracted and just write. The next thing is to gather data. So you can spend time doing research or sometimes you may be writing using journals. It may be material that you, you have used before could be from teaching, journals, pre-existing data, or you're doing research. So you want to research and gather that material and include that. That can help you to go faster. And then you just organize the data. So sometimes I'm thinking of a topic and I can spend part of the writing time to just Google the data that I need, put it in, or I will put a mark or something to say, go back and research that. Then I continue writing and uh, fill in the blanks after. The final thing is to write without editing. One of the things is that you're writing and editing, you're using two different sides of your brain and it will slow you down. So you want the ideas to flow and no interruption. So I know it's hard, especially when you're educated and trained or that kind of thing, you, you're paying attention to the grammar. But for this challenge to make it work, you just want to do free writing. So write with your heart and not your head. <laughs> so what you're going to do, if it is half an hour, just write freely and then come back another time and clean it up. Or maybe you write for 15 minutes and then you come back and you clean it up for another 15 minutes, but don't write and edit at the same time. Some people do it, but what I find is that it interrupts the creative flow and you have to start. It takes longer and uh, you may not finish. And here is a bonus secret, which is why if you join the Indie Entrepreneurs Facebook group, and I'll put the link in the show notes, it works, is that if you're doing it as a group, you get accountability, right? So the group We'll be able to encourage you. So every day in the group, we're going to encourage you to write your post and share, write a post. Every day in the group, we're going to encourage you to write a post, share your experience. You know, we're going to cheer you along. In that community, you're going to have the support to help you to finish. If you don't want to join the community, but you still want to take the challenge, you can at least tell one person who will check on you. When I was writing my first book, it was my mom that used to check on me and that helped me to, to finish. You know, when you have that accountability, that person to check on you, it helps. And pray. I am religious. I am Christian. And I find that sometimes when I'm not in the mood and the muse is not flowing, that when I pray, the ideas flow and my energy <laughs> um, level changes. And I ask God for strength to help me to finish. And uh, he does give the strength, the inspiration, the wisdom to do it. And so those are the tips to help you to go from idea to book. That is the manuscript, the first draft within 30 days or less. So will you join me on the Rocket Writing Challenge, November 1 to 30 in the Indie in Entrepreneurs Facebook group? Let me know. Get the book, The Rocket Writer. It is free. Join the mailing list and you'll be getting the writing prep information from October 23 through to 27. So that's it. If you found this episode useful, let me know. Email entrepreneursecrets at gmail.com. Subscribe to the YouTube channel or wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave a comment. I want to shout out before we go, though. I think it's Anne-Marie Dwar. She's an author. And uh, she commented on last week's episode about the KDP changes. So I want to thank you, Anne-Marie for listening to the podcast and leaving a comment. 
I want to remind you of a quote from Ecclesiastes 12 verse 12b. It says, of the making of many books, there is no end. So therefore, go pen it to win it and dominate entrepreneurship. Ta for now. Until next time.